Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. Hi, you guys. Yeah. Um, just a couple of announcements before we get started. I want to talk today about receiving God's love, and there was a whole lot of talk about God's love. I wanted to present a little different, pers well, a perspective on receiving God's love today. And uh, but before we do, we're next week we will be doing Love After Marriage here in Reading. Reading. Five five uh, days, Monday through Friday. And it's the sixth through the ninth, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Live here in Reading. And um if you know somebody that really wants to get in, we could possibly get them in still. But uh have them contact immediately, call or contact uh not, well actually Info at nothing hidden. Yeah, info at nothing hidden dot com. Email info at nothing hidden dot com and get and you ask going. Ask for the workshop, the November workshop. But January, oops, I was going to get the dates. I didn't get them. Do you remember the dates for single life in January? Um, um, I think it's the twenty first through the twenty fourth. Fourth. I think you're right. And we're doing single life workshop. It'll be in person here in Reading and online. And so. Um, that would be a great opportunity for a lot of people who can't get here but want to do it. And it would be a great opportunity for people who can come to actually do it in person mm -hmm. and online and uh, get all the benefits of growth and strengthening in your ability to relate and connect. And ultimately be prepared for marriage. Yeah. yeah. So uh, also we're, we're doing an online line online lamb right now every monday night first time we've done that mm -hmm. and it's going really well we've got 70 some couples involved and uh we're really enjoying it and it's going great so interesting what can happen online when you're not face to face yeah. we have done online for single life and for lamb before like you said even with an intensive and we've been amazed. We didn't want to do online for the longest time because we thought, oh, it's only good in person. But the small groups get so connected because all you know is the small group online. And so mm -hmm. they remain connected even after the workshop. So you have an ongoing, supportive community with you. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, so we're going to jump in. And Father, I pray that you'd help me to really convey your heart today and help me to clarify your word in a way that really represents you well and helps us understand how to receive your love mm -hmm. in a stronger and deeper ways. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to be looking at some notes I've written down here. I um I do my Bible study daily on on Bible study software and so I write notes. I've got hundreds literally hundreds of notes <laughs> on um the Bible as I read through it. And so I was reading in Gospel of John, chapter 13, and in verse 1, it says, Now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Hmm. There's a lot in this. It's just before Jesus. Uh, the last. It's the last Passover before he's crucified, but... What stood out to me was that, was that part that Jesus said, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. <clears throat> and it made me think, wow, that sounds like there's something special or different about those um, who, who were his own and his love for those who were his own. And it got me thinking about that. And you know, we talk a lot about God loves everybody. His love is unconditional. And that direction, God's love towards us is unconditional. It's because he is love. He cannot be anything but love towards mm -hmm. us. And so uh, you take a person like Judas Iscariot, who Jesus gave him everything he gave the other disciples. Mm -hmm. He loved him so much that when, when Jesus said, one of you will betray me, and none of them had a clue who it would be, because Jesus did only what the Father wanted to. He never reacted to Judas and knowing that he was betraying, knowing that Judas was stealing. Mm -hmm. um, he was doing what God wanted him to do. And his love came purely 100% from God's heart 
to him. Mm -hmm. And yet, God's love for Judas did not benefit him. Mm -hmm. He didn't receive the benefit. He, Jesus said he would perish. He would be destroyed. And, and so there's something about knowing how we receive and benefit from God's love that's really important. And receiving the full benefits. In um, John 17, Jesus is praying for his disciples. He prays to the Father before he goes to the cross. And he prays for his disciples and he prays for those who would believe through his disciples. And in verse 9, he says, I ask on their behalf, and this is on behalf of his disciples. Jesus is praying to the Father on behalf of the disciples. And he says, I do not ask on behalf of the world, but of those whom you have given to me, for they are yours. So, again, we are to love the world as Jesus loved the world. And yet, as I thought about this, I thought, well, well what really is the difference? Jesus loves everybody, loves everybody unconditional. And here's the difference. The difference is our love back for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Our love, we can choose how much we love him, whether we either accept him or not, whether we love him or not, will determine much of what we are able to receive from him. There are things that every single person receives, even who don't know him, don't love him, the righteous and the unrighteous, God says he, Jesus said he causes, God the Father causes his rain to fall and the sun to shine on the righteous and the unrighteous. So he, we're all in this world, we can receive things from this world, but there are things that we can receive through our choice to love God that allows us to receive back from him his love that, that um, a person who is a non-believer or even a person who's a believer but has a very limited love or relationship with God will, will, not, will not receive very much of. So I went to John chapter 14 and verses uh, 12 through 27. I'm going to read through those one by one or a couple at a time and talk about some of the things that we receive out of our love relationship and faith relationship with Jesus Christ. The first thing is from John 14, 12, and this is honestly, it's pretty one of those mind-blowing passages to, I don't really even still fully understand, understand it because Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, will he do also, and greater works than these will he do because I go to the Father. That's crazy that what we're going to, somebody who believes in him or some people who believe in him will do greater works than Jesus. And there's this empowerment that comes out of our faith for him to do the works of Jesus and greater works. And you know, as I thought of that, I thought, well, maybe it's collectively, all together we'll do greater, but it's actually talking about, it says he, mm -hmm. a singular person, will do greater works than Jesus. Well, how do we do greater works than Jesus? Certainly not works of the law, works of being good. Jesus completely, 100% fulfilled the law. And there's no more than you can do than that. You can't mm -hmm. do greater than that. Mm -hmm. But then there are also works of faith. And I think that's somewhere, it, it, something that he's talking about, where he says, those who believe in him, who have faith in him, will do greater works than him. And again, I don't know. I don't know exactly what that is, how it could be greater than what Jesus did. Um, uh, it, I know, perhaps leading more people to faith in Christ than Jesus did. And I don't know. But there is this promise. Believing in him will empower us to do greater works than Jesus. And that's something we just need to believe and receive and and do all we can and know that it's our our faith in him that leads us to to this and then um 13 and 14 and he says whatever you ask in my name i will do that the father may be glorified in the son if you ask me anything in my name i will do it so mm -hmm. so now we receive the name of jesus and what is that we pray in the name of jesus it's mm -hmm. not those words per se Jesus lived in the name of the Father. For Jesus, that meant it was the Father speaking and living and working through him, not from himself. 
he we ask out of Jesus nature out of Jesus essence and not our own not our own apart from him that he will do whatever we we ask mm -hmm. and then we get on to we get on to verses 15 16 17 and now Jesus begins to talk about our love for him and what our love for him brings to us that we will not receive if we don't have his love for him okay he loves us perfectly it does not change it never will change but our love back uh, will affect what we can receive our being able to love him back being able to love him back um, and he uh, determines some of the things we get back from him <clears throat> so John 14 says if you love me you will Jesus says if you love me you will keep my commandments I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever that is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him but you know him because he abides with you and will be with you amazing it starts with if you love me so there's a condition if and actually the word love if you love that word is in the subjunctive mood a little English lesson grammar lesson here the subjunctive mood is a mood of condition or possibility it's not a statement of fact um, meaning if, it could happen or not happen. exactly that's exactly right so if there's a condition on our part if we love Jesus um, he will ask the Father and the result one of the things we get is the helper the spirit of truth to be with us forever forever and and he also says that the world cannot receive this gift mm -hmm. the gift of the Holy Spirit the gift of the Spirit of truth to lead and guide us into all truth a person in the world who is not a believer <clears throat> will will say many things that they believe are true and that's where we get my truth my truth instead of the truth and people believe things that really are not true in God's and God's eyes and are full of deception and and our love I really believe for us as believers the more we can love the more we can give to the, to the Lord the more we can receive back from from the spirit of truth so we in our love back for the Lord our commitment to him first mm -hmm. and our love for him we receive back the um, the Holy Spirit from a person who is an obedient lover it's it, it's not just obedience it's love that leads us to be able to obey him and to um, be an obedient follower of Jesus Christ okay so verses next verses 18 and 19 Jesus said I will not leave you as orphans so he's talking about people who know him and love him I will not leave you as orphans I will come to you after a little while the world will no longer see me but you will see me because I live you also will live mm -hmm. okay so here again those of us who love Jesus and obey him walk with him best we can nobody perfectly but as we continue to grow and walk in that number one we're, we're not left alone and even though we can't see him with our eyes we will see him we will be able to recognize him where he's working where he's not Jesus mm -hmm. said my sheep hear my voice we'll be able to hear him if we are in Jesus and um, these are some of the benefits there's there's more but I just wanted to pause these are some of the benefits that we get as New Testament believers in in a special way through the Spirit of God that comes to us the people in the Old Testament did not have the benefit mm -hmm. of and we as believers have the have have this benefit in John um, chapter um, verse 20 8 14 20 Jesus says in that day you will know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me and and what is that it, it's this oneness this oneness with God mm -hmm. that we will understand uh, <laughs> we don't understand the Trinity but we will understand that there's no separation in God and Jesus there are many people in the world 
who can accept the concept of God, but not the concept of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And yet Jesus said, if we know him, we don't really know him, we know the Father. If we see him, we don't really see him, we see the Father. And um, Jesus is God in the person of Jesus Christ. And for us who know and love him, we're able to see the connection, we're able to receive the benefit mm -hmm. of, of knowing Jesus, God in the person, in the, in the flesh. And we'll know that we'll see the connection with God and Jesus. And for people who, who know God and say, I know God, I love God, I believe in God, but Jesus, I, I, I can't accept him as Messiah, I can't believe in what he, his words. They don't fully know God. They know some parts of God, but they're missing a lot of what, of who God is. <clears throat> One of the most important verses are verse 22 and 23. Judas, it says, it's not Judas Iscariot. There was two Judas, Judases who were disciples of Jesus, apostles. And Judas asked Jesus and said, Lord, what has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? So again, there's this distinction that Judas was picking up. It's like, whoa, you're, you're talking about us different than you're talking about the world. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me. So again, he starts with our love for him. And it's again, it's in the subjunctive mood. If anyone may or might love me, it's going to depend on us, our choice. If I love him, listen to what happens. Num number one, we will keep his word. Number two, my father will love him. Now, wait a minute. Jesus loves everybody. And his love is unconditional. He is love. He cannot be anything but love. But he says, but my father will love him. If in our response of loving Jesus, we will keep his word and my father will love him. There is something different about love. It's kind of like, it, it may be like, I, I love other people in the world, but with Lori and I, she loves me back. We have a relationship of love that I don't have with any other woman, any other woman in the world. And, and that makes my love for her deeper mm -hmm. and more real, more consistent, more part of my life than it is for anybody else. And I think it's something like that, that... Uh, our receiving, our ability to receive Jesus' love and everything he has to give for us, we limit mm -hmm. when we are not able to give ourselves to him in love, in devotion, in caring, willing to give up ourselves, just wanting what we want apart from God, not wanting the things that God has put desires in us that are from him. I'm not talking about giving those up. I'm talking about giving up the things that our flesh would want that God would not want. The more we can love him, we will obey him. We will keep his words. That means to, you know, that's just obeying us, mm -hmm. following his words. And my father will love him. And then listen to this, the third thing. We will come to him. Jesus is saying him and the father will come and make our abode with him. They will, he will, they will dwell with us, live with us. All of us together. All of us together. That's and, cool. and that's something that the world cannot, cannot have. And those of us who really do know and love Jesus are growing more and more into that, into the mm -hmm. state of Jesus and the Father abiding with us. I, as I was going through the study a few days ago, I thought of a young man that, that we know that, that really loves God, loves to worship God, has had tremendously personal encounters with the Lord, being with the Lord, seeing him, being in heaven with the Lord. And I actually, when I thought of this verse, he, he loves to spend hours worshiping God. And, and I thought of this verse, I, I texted him and I told him it made me think of him. Mm -hmm. And he said, this verse has been one of the things he has, has been one of the greatest desires of his heart mm -hmm. to love God in a way that he would keep his word, that the, the father's love would come in strong ways to him, mm -hmm. and that the father and Jesus would make their abode with him. Mm -hmm. And this, this young man, he, 
so strongly carries the love of God, mm -hmm. not just for himself, but for other people. And so this is one of the things we can have. After giving our life to the Lord, after making a statement of faith, a declaration of faith in Jesus, do we continue to grow in love for him? Mm -hmm. A love that leads us to obey, that makes us want to obey. Mm -hmm. Wherever we, Whatever we treasure, another way of loosely talking about love, what we treasure, what becomes important to us, mm -hmm. our heart follows. Mm -hmm. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, Jesus said. A love that draws Jesus and the Father to make their abode. And I just read what you wrote down. That word abode means staying, abiding, and dwelling. To have Jesus and the Father dwelling with us for yeah. the rest of our lives, as yeah. long as we want him in us. Yeah. To some extent, the, the, his abiding, his staying, remaining, dwelling with us, is to some extent, and this verse makes it very clear, it's conditional mm -hmm. on our willingness and how much we're willing to love Him. Mm -hmm. uh, get, uh, love Him in a way that causes us to obey Him, to, to put ourselves word. under Him and to listen to Him and let Him lead us. Okay? And I think we all want that. We all want Him with us. Um, we all want His love. We want Him dwelling with us. He's saying this is part of how we can on our part, make that happen in a very real, very personal way. And then John um, 14, 24 says, He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word uh, which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. So it's kind of the flip side of it. You, you, can't, you can't just say, Oh, God loves me, and everything is the same because God loves me, but he's saying, no, if we don't love, we miss out. We don't, keep we don't his... love him back. Exactly. We don't love Jesus back. We don't give our hearts to him. And keep his commandments, his we, word. Yeah, we, we don't can't keep his words. And then we don't get the benefit of his words. Yeah. We don't really get the truth working in our lives. Yeah. We don't get his love. We don't know or understand his love. We can't bring it to other people. And we don't have Jesus fully able to bring his love to us so like he, will, he wants to. He will still love us, Absolutely. even if we can't do all those things, but it limits yeah. what his love can actually do in us because yeah. we can't fully receive it. Yeah. And this is a key to show us how to allow him and his love to dwell in us. Yeah. I think another way of thinking about this is we can understand this as parents and children, mm. um, or even like a pastor, or even as a counselor. Um, with people, when you see somebody, say a parent and child, you see a child becoming angry, rebellious, making bad choices, and you love them, and you want them to make good choices, you want them to succeed, mm -hmm. or a pastor with his congregation, or because of a counselor with people, and you're, you're wanting to help them, and you do love them. It's motivated out of love, not out of selfishness, or mm -hmm. out of whatever, and yet, Lord, your mother, what happens? What is? What does the child miss out on when they can't receive your love and your direction from a loving perspective? They miss out on the reality of that love, which is security and belonging and um, completeness and, um, I don't know, and, just... And peace. Just, a, yes, and a connection. great peace. Yeah. And connection yeah. relationship. In other words, if, if a child who's just a, a child or a person is becoming rebellious, going their own way and making really bad choices for themselves, and you know, out of love, you know a better way for them, but you just you do your best to communicate that, to bring it to them, but they won't receive it. We don't receive it. Yeah. And um, then that love that you have for the person isn't really completed. It can't do its work in right. that person. That's a good way to say that. Yeah. I've, I've often said this, that in order, love needs to be received in order to be completed. And yeah. we can even see that in our relationship. Yes. I know early on in our marriage, um, I, many things that Lori did out of love and kindness for me, little things, I would diminish them. I would diminish the re, uh, my ability to receive her love because I was 
say in my head I say something like oh she has to say that because she's my wife <laughs> or oh she has to do that just because that's kind of like her role mm -hmm. and I, I was really unable to receive it it was my problem it was my issue mm -hmm. with not being able to receive love and and I, I guess over the years as we've learned as we continue to love each other and give to each other mm -hmm. I think both of us are probably better able to receive Absolutely. that love as well. Yeah. So that principle works in our relationships as mm -hmm. well as with, with the Lord. Mm -hmm. In our Love After Marriage workshop, at the end of the first chapter, I teach, I wrote a, a devotional called Treasuring Your Way to Love. And it, it, it's about this principle as well. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be. Mm -hmm. And so if we're married, and what... I really love is my work. What I really love is my cars or my possessions or my house or my, my, if it's a woman, it's, I love my hobbies. I love my sewing. I love my cooking. You know, we, that's where our heart's going to be drawn. But if we are married and I love my wife and I do my best to put her above other things that draw my heart's attention and stuff mm -hmm. and her uh, but even loving our kids but keeping a place for our marriage mm -hmm. where what we treasure what we invest in what we put our time into is what what's gonna what is going to where our hearts are going to follow and so our, our love and our heart will follow what we treasure invest mm -hmm. in what we really love yeah okay that's good and verses 14 uh, chapter 14, verses 25 and 26, it says, the, Jesus, again speaking, says, These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Mm. This, this applies to us. Jesus was talking to his disciples, and you can see such a dramatic difference in how they lived even while Jesus was with them. Mm -hmm. I believe it's right at the very beginning of this chapter 14 mm -hmm. where Jesus says, it is better for you that I go so that I can send the Holy Spirit. The disciples after Pentecost, after the Holy Spirit came on them, were bold, they were courageous, they were witnesses for Jesus. They, they did not love their lives even unto death. Mm -hmm. and, and it was the Holy Spirit working in them. And, and part of what Jesus is saying here, for those of us who love him, we are going to receive that, the Spirit of God. And if I love the Word of God more than the Spirit of God, I am going to miss out on having the Spirit of God teach me uh, and instruct me mm -hmm. from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And he says that the Holy Spirit would teach us all things and bring to our remembrance and actually put things in our mind, in our heads, that we can't get on our own. He can take us way beyond our own ability to understand, way beyond our own ability to think and, and see things just from the Word of God through our own understanding, our own natural mm -hmm. ability, no matter how great our intelligence is. Mm -hmm. It's not only intelligence, but it's the spirit of truth that helps us understand things correctly as God uh, wants us to. And, and so we another benefit of loving and obeying Jesus on our part is that we receive this gift of the Holy Spirit from the Father. Mm -hmm. The promise of the Father is poured out. And then last, uh, John 14, 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful, he says. So there's a peace that the world cannot give that we get in our response to Jesus, our response of love and obedience to Jesus. And one word on obedience, I've taught on some of these on this before, but the obedience really is first about listening to Jesus mm -hmm. and then following, mm -hmm. not just gathering all the rules and laws and just doing them, but listening. And this is again why we need the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us and teach us. And John 16, Jesus said the Holy Spirit would glorify Jesus because he's going to take the things of Jesus and disclose them to us. So now when Jesus is not here in person, we have 
we have the Holy Spirit to bring to us the things of Jesus, mm -hmm. each of us individually, that he can t talk to and communicate with every one of us. And that's one of the ways it's better for us to have the Holy Spirit than to have Jesus here with us. Mm -hmm. And um, Jesus, as he was speaking, he says, I have said these things to you in John um, 16, 33, I've said these things to you so that in me you might have peace. There is a peace that's available to us being connected with Jesus that the world cannot give. And boy, this is something that we fight for, to be connected with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Believing who he is, loving who he is, when our eyes, our, our feelings, our emotions tell us what the world is saying, what the circumstances of the world are saying. Or even what the enemy is saying. And what the enemy in the world is saying, what situations are telling us. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, um, in John 16, 33, he says, I've said these things so that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. We're going to have things that pressure us and stress us. We can't get rid of all the stress. But he says, mm -hmm. take courage. I have overcome the world. And so we can have this peace in Jesus, in our loving relationship with him. That when we really love him above ourselves, we love him above the things that are going on in our world, uh, we can have a peace that the world cannot give. We mm -hmm. have a peace in the storm. We can have a peace and, and, and an internal rest before the situation is turned around. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I hope this is helpful and encouraging to you. I, I guess one of the reasons for this is I want to help us complete the idea of God's love for us mm -hmm. and not just stop it. Oh, God loves us and that his love is unconditional. Mm -hmm. That is true 100%. I don't want to take away from that one bit. Mm -hmm. But what I do want is for us to receive all that we can have of that love and from mm -hmm. that love by our choice to respond in love and obedience back to him. Do you want to pray? Sure. All right. Oh, Jesus, we thank you that this isn't something that happened a long time ago and is not relevant today, this moment. We thank you that you are wanting us to realize the greatness, the power, the depth, the height, um, the breadth of this love, and that it is as we are able to follow you, obey you, and, and give you all of us that we receive. And it's not even a duty because the more we know you, the more we love you, the more we understand your love. So I just ask, Father, that as we're listening to this today, that you would just release grace and anointing on each one of us to make this a deeper reality in our lives. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for joining us. And again, we'll be here Thursday to do our Zoom Live. Mm -hmm. And um, Ask Holy Spirit if there's something you want to work through. And then get on and do it with us. All right. Till then, bye-bye.